Testament lesson is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, beginning at verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as, as with joy in the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
In those days, the decree went out from C from Augustus, Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds, living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy. For all the people to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the baby. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Now, how long that took, I don't know. Maybe millions of years. More than four weeks of Advent. And God saw that the creatures were good. And sometimes he said they were very good. I'm sure that was the rainbow trout. <laughs> and God spent time with the man and the woman in the idyllic garden. Talking about their lives, pointing out what fruit of the trees they could eat and what they should avoid. God loved the people so much, but they were busy, really busy. When he sent people like Elijah as a prophet to tell them how to live together well, they had jobs and families and their time was all taken up, so they didn't pay much attention. And God noticed something really important. The babies were the only ones listening. When God said, you know those dust motes in the light that you see, that's really angels dusting the lights of heaven. And the babies smiled and giggled, and their mom said, isn't that cute? When people hurt each other in wars and other ways, God cried. And the babies cried with them. And their mom said, oh, it's hot. And then God had an idea. If I want these people to trust me, to know that I love them, I have to become one of them. And so God got his archangels together in the heavenly vestry, and he said, I'm going to earth as a baby.
Spiritually, this moment of incarnation was celebrated by angels. This simple manger in this barn or cave, however you understand this place of birth, is where the heaven and earth are joined by nothing more or less than love. Social location of this announcement to shepherds are just ordinary people doing their job, nobody special, no credentials, no advanced degrees, no worldly success, just underpaid menial laborers. My friends, from Amos to Mary, God works in surprising ways. And God's love lies right under the radar of every detection system we have. God reaches out to all, to the rich, to the poor, to the laborer, to the employer, to the adult, to the child. No one is left out. The first and the last are the same. This child is born in an untraditional family, and the witnesses are underpaid laborers. And God will be with them in our time as well. His favor is not just for those who think they earned it, or for those who have special opportunity or privilege. Grace is for everyone. Sometimes Joseph is dressed in brown and he's in the back of the stable, almost out of sight, while Mary and the baby are up front with the light. But tonight, Joseph's out front, greeting whoever comes. Maybe he's giving Mary a bit of rest and picking up Jesus and holding him, comforting him, cuddling him. A baby is an amazing thing. A baby is so vulnerable. If they're cold, they can't get up and go get a blanket. If they're hungry, they can't fix their meal. But they can grasp your finger and look into your eyes and capture your heart. And I believe that's what happened on that incarnate moment in that small place with Mary and Joseph on what we call this holy night. I think the angels have a message for us tonight. <clears throat> Everything we want or need or the commercials tell us we want is lying in a manger, the embodiment of love given for us. In the Christmas spirit, I ask you to open your heart, to let this incarnation of love take root in your being. Be born this night in you. So when you take a moment now, I want you to imagine being able to pick up this infant and hold him close. Feel his breath on your neck. Let him grasp your finger. Let him look into your eyes. And let him grow up not just in your heart and life, but in this community, making this night a holy night.
Please join me in an icing cream as we profess the faith of the church. We believe in one God, the Father.
born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
scattered the darkness of sin and brightened your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made 